Howdy folks, welcome back to the shop. So today we're going to be making a shaft for a South Bend lathe. Uh, we're having a difficult time finding what lathe this is. It looks like it's a, a heavy 10 uh, South Bend lathe, but we're not sure because it's not the same as a heavy 10, but the whole uh, carriage assembly and everything, it, it looks and seems like it's a heavy 10. And uh, the closest thing I could find to it, and we're not sure, it to me it looks like it's a junior heavy 10 um which it seems like they're very very rare but anyway i found this lathe locally around this area here for my uncle and he ended up coming out and picking it up we got it for a relatively decent price um actually the price we were pretty happy with but he's going through it now and um finding out you know some of the issues that it has so there's some shimming issues that it had and we ended up finding this shaft and you know first glance it don't look too bad until i turn it this way so we don't know what happened to this um what this does is it holds the gear i got the gear behind me here and this gear here is driven off of the hand crank that you have to move the carriage back and forth and then <clears throat> this is actually what goes against the the rack that's on the lathe itself so <clears throat> we was wondering why it was skipping teeth and whatnot uh, you know, it's hard to tell what previous owners do, but the, the lathe was extremely dirty, and I say that very light. I mean, it was extremely dirty. Um, the guy had it, an alternator rebuild shop and starter shop. He used it to turn the armatures down, um, and that's all he used it for. And um, he never really cleaned, per se. Uh, it was very, very dirty. But anyway, so the plan today is, um, like I said, we don't know what happened here. Uh, instead of trying to straighten this out, we're just going to go ahead and make a new one. It's rather simple. Um, I'm just going to use 4140, 4142, something like that. I already have it chucked in a lathe. So let me bring you a little bit closer and I'll show you what the drawing is. And then we'll get everything set up in a lathe here. And we'll go ahead and make this shaft. All right, so I kind of made a rough drawing of what this is supposed to be. And you can see, like I said, how bad this shaft is bent here. Um, it does have a... A hole drilled through here this is just a regular center but this hole here and goes all the way up through here and then this channel is cut in here and what that is is so you can oil it so it could get some oil down inside this gear here but <clears throat> all in all it's a very pretty simple job to do the threads here are 5 8 18 um, and you know I have it marked out how much it's cut in uh, this diameter here is uh, 3 quarter and it's 3 quarter on the nose um, I thought it would go down to tenths, but it does not go down to tenths. It is three quarter point zero zero. So then we got this little raise here. The OD of this is one inch, so I have one inch bar stock. So that's my plan: is this I, uh, or uh, OD will not get cut. And then this shaft here, I measured it, and it is point five zero two. Um, and then this keyway, well, it's not really a keyway, but this channel that's cut in here is 0.125 and i was debating whether to not cut it all the way to the end because if you put oil in here and you stop it you know cut the channel and stop it right around in here that oil will lay in here and then it'll lubricate that all the time instead of just running right out the bottom so i'm not sure why it was designed like that uh, but it doesn't matter we'll get to that when it comes time uh, to cut that in but that's pretty much it so it's not really that hard um overall length is not really that long i think it's what three inches if you add everything up so uh let's go over to the lathe let's get this all chucked up and uh let's get cutting all right so we're over here to lathe and uh i'm going to try to give you the bird's eye view of everything here uh so we'll see how well it works out but so i already got this bar stock in here like i said it's one inch od so we don't have to do any turning on the outside for the that one part that's in there that one feature so I got it already zeroed out and you can see it there. I might bounce with maybe a thou, um, which some of the glitter uh, jerking or whatever you see in there, there's some chew marks in here from a previous blade turning that you could see one of the teeth marks in it. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get a center put in this, but I think what we're gonna face this off first, then we'll get a center and we'll set our zeros. So since everything's set up pretty much ready to go, let's get started. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and face this. And then once we face it, we're gonna set our zero down here. 
So we're going to just touch it lightly. We'll lock it. All right. I didn't think it needed to clean up the end much, so that was good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to slide our zero up here and set our zero. All right. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put our center in. Once we got our center in, we're going to go ahead and put our uh, center in. Okay, since the center's in, um, what we're going to do, the first cut is 377 thousandths. So with our dial indicator down here, we are going to get that marked off. So there's one, there's two, there's three, and then we go to our 77. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to set this back at zero. Just like that. And there's how far in our first cut's gonna be. This is, remember this is one inch uh, diameter. So we need to cut five eighths, uh, I think it was 18 thread onto the end of this. So we need to turn this down to five eighths. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to where my zero was. And I'm going to put a little scratch in there so I can kind of get a visual. We're not going to go crazy heavy cuts. Um, we're probably going to do maybe 50 thou cuts. So we should be within thousandths of being there. So, and we are, we're five thousandths over right now. So we're shooting for 0 0.65. So we're at 6.23 right now, or I'm sorry, 6.3 right now. And I actually am a thou under, but it won't hurt anything because uh, since we're threading it, uh, it'll be fine. So what we're going to do is we're going to run it into the end to the zero mark, and then we'll face this section here. All right. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to go ahead and cut the, the 0.75. So this, this section here is going to be this, and you can see I left it so I can uh, kind of dome this like a factory look here. So now it's 542,000 stepped over, and it, this diameter, remember, it's uh, 3 quarter. So we're going to do the same thing. So we're at zero. And we're going to step off 542. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and then 42. So we stepped off the 542 thousands, um, and we're going to go ahead and reset this back at zero again. And I'm going to do the same thing. We're going to start up, and we're going to make a line. And all that is is to give it visual. Sometimes it just helps you. And then we're gonna scratch off just like there. Set our zero down here. So we only need one turn of the dial on this to get us to the 
Okay, this dimension we're going to try to hit dead on, so we're going to try to sneak up on it. So we are, looks like we're 30 thousandths off, which would make sense. All right, we're just gonna use some sandpaper. This is a little bit worn out, uh, 120. Let's see if we can get that to polish in. It's looking good. I got some turning marks still in it, but... I don't know if you can see that, but it is right there. So that part's in. Um, next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get these uh, recesses cut into this. And then uh, I should have polished this and we're going to break all the edges here real quick. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and cut that little uh, chamfer or that little recess in there. Um, if you look at this one here, I measured it. It's right around 62 thousandths. Uh, so it's a 16th wide and it's 20 thousandths deep, so it's not very deep. So we're just going to use a parting tool and try to go in there. And um, I'm just going to set the zero on my uh, cross slide here and we'll crank her in 20. I'm going to add a little bit of lube to it. Alright, and then we're going to step back another uh, 10 thousandths because my cutter is only 50. I mean 12 thousandths, I mean, so we're just going to go back there. And this dimension here is not critical. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing here is we're going to come up and just touch that surface just like that and we're going to touch looks like this needs to be lower and we're going to come in and touch this surface right there I'm going to set my zero again And just do the same thing. This one is deeper than what the other one was. Um, it is 83,000 steep. And there's our 80. And the same thing, we are going to come over here and we're going to move it over 10 thousandths or 12 thousandths and then cut it just that edge off. Just like that. And you can see, I mean, we're starting to look like a, what this part is. So I think what we're going to do next is uh, we're going to go ahead and get these threads cut on the end here. Okay, I got everything set up to cut these threads. Um, they are 18 thread. So on my machine, I had to adjust my dials to that. Uh, I did a scratch pass. You can see it already. You can see it is the 18 thread. And I did verify by the piece that was here too, just to make sure. And you can see that it is 18 thread. So this is going to be a little difficult because I'm coming up on the shoulder here. So I may end up stopping short and then um, using a die to go down the rest of the way, but uh, uh, we'll see. That's the only thread cutter I have, so that's all I can do. Uh, 
I missed my dial. Put a little bit more lube on that. We should be getting close all right so what we're gonna do to test this is I'm gonna use the original nut and um, and I hate to say it but I'm kind of glad I stopped where I did I knew we were getting close and um, you can see I'm already there so it threaded on actually pretty nice already um, you can tell it needs uh, threads filed a little bit there get the points off but yeah we're there already so that's great and you can see that it doesn't thread all the way to the end like I said um, I might have to take a die on that because there's gonna be a couple threads that I can't get down to right down in here but uh, otherwise that is a nice fit Yeah, you can see, I'm very happy with that. So, that's one thing that I wish I had was another style cutter that got me actually closer to the shoulders. Um, that's what that relief there was supposed to help with. And it does, um, but you can see, I still need a little bit more. Now let's uh, put the other cutter in and we're gonna cut this shaft here. So I decided I'm going to go ahead and try to file this and round this over, um, kind of like the old one was. You can you can kind of see it was just rounded just slightly. So we're just going to try to use a file here. And that's all I wanted to do. You can see how it kind of rounded the end over just a little bit. And it matches this a little bit closer. Not that it had to, but why not? Okay, so I went ahead and swapped the cutter because now we're going to cut this way. Um, and the main reason is, is so I can cut this sh shoulder in. So I'm going to run this probably down to here somewhere. But one of the tricks that I do a lot, and especially on this side since it's not that critical, is I just run this up and then I run the cutter up just to where it touches it and you you'll feel it and then I'll set my zero and if you remember right that shoulder was 244 so there's one there's two and there's 44. So right there's where that's gonna be at. And since we're cutting that way, I'm gonna move my indicator to this side and set my zero over here. And like I said, uh, and then what we're gonna do is, you know, we know this is gonna be here. So we're just gonna go down here somewhere, say in there and we're going to mark a line and then that'll be our stop. I was just doing my touch off there. And it's pretty much the same. So just setting feed rate. Um, so what we're going to do, we're actually going to work backwards. Um, kind of seems weird but uh, that's what we're gonna do almost forgot to put my center back in <clears throat> make sure you definitely put that back in all right we're ready to start Apparently I did my math wrong, but that's all right. Uh, this, it won't hurt us. 
Um, so we'll just keep going. So we have a half inch that needs to come off of this. Uh, I might slow it down and see if we can get, you know, fairly heavy cuts, like 100 and, 100 and some thou cuts here. Right there would be a hundred. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and measure this uh, because this isn't uh, 244 thousands. Yeah, see it's 309, so I did some bad math somewhere along the lines, but nevertheless, okay, so we know it's 300, 300 thousands, so since we have the Dow indicator set down on this side down here, all we have to do is just crank it over. Um, what do we got to take off? S roughly 60 thousands, you know, so. Uh, 343 and a half that's close enough so now we'll set the zero down here back to zero and uh, we'll just keep cutting so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get this uh, finished or not finished up but I'm gonna go ahead and finish or cutting this uh, the battery is gonna die in the GoPro real quick so I will bring you right back on our final cuts All right, guys, I got the turning all finished up and we got it pretty much the size. Uh, we'll double check it here and you can see we're almost dead on size. I was shooting for 0 0.502 and I'm at 0 0.501. Uh, it looks like 1.7. So, I mean, that's with Intensa. So that's a, that's a good value there. And I did check it here and we can check it in all three spots you know there i can already see it's good and then same with this side here and it's the same thing one point yeah looks like seven so the shaft has already cut the size so this this shaft here is pretty much done with lathe work the only thing we're going to do real quick is we're going to put a little chamfer on this and um maybe hit this edge here it feels like there's a little bit of burr there and uh that's pretty much it yeah it feels good it looks good so i'm very pleased with that so what we're going to do now is i'm going to go ahead and take this out and then we are going to uh just saw cut it off but you can see it's almost identical other than cutting this groove and drilling this hole in here. So, all right, we'll get everything set up in the mill and I'll bring you back and we'll start getting this cut in. All right, guys, we got everything set up in here in the mill. Um, I got all the digital readouts all set to zero and everything. Uh, I already touched off the bit, so we got an eighth inch bit. It's 60 thousandths deep. Uh, what we're gonna do is gonna go in 3 sixteenths off of this edge, this shoulder here. And then we're going to stop at 3 sixteenths before it hits the end of the thing here. So um, with the digital readout, it'll be, you know, 1, 0.1875 right here. And on this side, it'll be point, uh, or uh, 1.793. I think it's 2.5. I don't remember exactly, but it's 1.793. That's close enough. Um, so that's where we're going to stop here. And like I said, it's 60,000 steep. So uh, keep in mind, too, this is a gearhead milling machine, so it's a little bit loud. So uh, bear with me.
And you know, this dimension, the depth on this isn't critical. I mean, because it's just an oil. So all we're going to do is file that to take the bird off. And that is it. All right, looks good to me. So next thing we're going to do, and that's kind of why this drill bit's still hanging in here. I didn't want to lose the size. Next thing we got to do is drill this cross hole that goes down through here. So let's get that all set up and I'll bring you right back. All right, guys, let's talk about the setup here a little bit. So, you know, this is extremely hard to measure this and everything. Um, what I had found is it seems to be really close to 10 degrees. Um, so I think that's what we're going to cut. So basically, I took every angle that I could possibly do with the drill bit in there, kind of give me a reference, you know, because this shaft's bent, so it's really difficult to figure out what that is. So what I did is I basically got everything set up in here at 10 degrees and I used the protractor here to get me to that. Um, what I did was use it against the block and basically get me to, you know, the 10 degrees that I think it's at. So what, and then also what I did was I used a regular square and I used the flats that we just cut those, uh, you know, that notch we just cut. I use that as my square mark. So I should be square this way. That way, you know, whenever I drill through this, it should come into that area that we just milled out. So uh, so I got a spotting drill in here first. Um, unfortunately, we don't know the dimensions on this, where this hole is. You can kind of see it's really close to the edge here. So. What I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to measure the hole and measure from the edge and I'm just going to kind of, I hate to say it, but we're kind of going to guess where that hole is. It's not critical. Like I said, it's just an oil hole, so it's not that big of a deal, but let's try to get it as close as we can. All right. So what I did was kind of eyeball this. I did a few measurements um, and it seems to be about 90 thousandths off of this edge. So that's kind of where we're going to shoot for. So you know it's kind of difficult but like I said it's not crazy critical so we are gonna go ahead and shoot for it and let's see what happens all right let's get the drill bit in there and uh all right, let's see if uh, how we did. We're getting kind of deep in there. We should be uh, kind of getting close here. And uh, bingo, we are right in the center of the notch, just where we wanted to be. Um, so what we're going to do is we'll drill just a little bit more. And uh, we're going to stop there. All right, I'll go ahead and deburr this out of the mill here, but uh, take a look. You can see the hole came out perfectly where I wanted it to. And if you look at the old one, look, it's almost in the same spot. Uh, once I get a bird out here, you'll be able to see it a little bit better. So, I mean, that's beautiful. It, it turned out great. So I'll get a die grinder in here and clean out this little burr and stuff like that. And uh, I'll get everything cleaned up and then uh, I'll bring you back and show you the final piece. Well, guys, take a look at it. Tell me what you think. There's the shaft. You can see the threads turned out fine. Um, what I ended up doing, it's hard to see in there, but you can see that I got, got it all deburred. You can see exactly where the hole had come through. And like I said, I can't be more than happy with it coming through there. And also, you know, after cleaning it up, I took and wire brushed the threads. Well, there must have been just a little bit of a burr there. 
because as soon as I can get it started here, look at that. It threads all the way up tight to the bottom too. So this shaft is complete. There's nothing else left to do on it. Um, and you can see it turned out really well. I'm very pleased with it. This, this here goes on there, spins free. Um, you can see on the back side. I mean, it looks almost identical to the original. And like I said, I stopped this right here, uh, this undercut here. And the main reason why is if you're putting oil in, you know, this thing sits in here like this. So if you put oil in here and um, you look at this shaft here, of course it won't go all the way up on, but if you look and it's sitting like that, all that oil is going to do is just run right out. So I'm not sure if it was designed like that on purpose. It may have been, but if it is, uh, there's no e reason why it cannot you know just chuck it back in the lathe here and just or the mill and just knock that end off but for now i'm going to leave it unless uh i see any other issues with not leaving it so with that said guys uh i appreciate you watching the video um if you have any information on, on this lathe please let me know like i said i think it's a south bend uh heavy 10 but i think it's the junior module model which is very rare um I'm not completely sure yet because it doesn't look like the 9 or the 9As or any of those. It does look similar, but it's not quite the same. So I'm going to post the picture up here and uh, see if you can help identify it. I'm not sure. Um, and I'll put the serial number up as well. But you can see, like I said, the shaft, it turned out perfect. I'm more than happy with this. So um, one more thing before we get off here is, you know, if you're wondering why I did not part this off in my lathe. Um, for some reason that lathe has a hard time parting stuff. You know, I can do undercuts and chamfers and stuff um, and recesses, but I have a hard time parting material off in that lathe. I think there's something wrong with the, uh, the head. You know, it needs tightened up or whatever. Uh, it does everything else I need to do. That's why I never really ripped into it. But that is something that we'll probably do in a future video. But um, so with that said, guys, I really appreciate you watching. Uh, any info is greatly appreciated, and until next time, take care.